Mm. Oh no, looks like I spilt a bit of coffee on myself. Speaking on things that are spilt all over your screen, welcome to a click video. Well, good evening, laddies, lasses and lassos. Welcome to the click you smell absolutely astounding today. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Today, I am incredibly excited to share this beautiful piece of content with you. Have you ever experienced in life that someone digs into your past a little bit too hard or is a little bit too presumptuous regarding bad experiences? And like two months later, you're standing in the shower and you realize that darn this would have been a perfect comeback to this to just traumatize them back. Well, this subreddit is full of instances where in the time and place that we all wish we had that zinger comeback in, and people actually did it. So welcome to r slash traumatize them back, where we just hit back at bullies and rude people and all those kind of snazzy little individuals. Enjoy. R slash traumatize them back. I was watching the click cover this subreddit and saw this comment on the right. Oh, heck yeah, we have reached the full circle of content. I cover r slash traumatize them back. People share their stuff in the comments. That makes it back to the subreddit and I read it again. <laughs> I have found the infinite loop of content. Anyway, the comment goes like this. The boys will be boys kid reminds me of the time I got suspended. Four older boys ganged up on me and I managed to hold my own. Hit one guy between the legs to give myself an opening to get out. The school called my mom and told her that I was being suspended for a day because their zero tolerance policy said that anyone involved in a fight got suspended. Wouldn't it be better if it was like a zero tolerance policy to like jump people in the first place, you know? Maybe that would actually Discourage bullying? No. <laughs> so my mom looked the principal in the eye and told him, If you are honestly telling me that you are suspending her for defending herself from four older boys, then I am taking her out for ice cream. This was the woman that taught me never to start a fight, but always finish it. This rule set also sounds so incredibly backwards. If you really wanted like a functional rule set for anti-bullying, you would have zero tolerance for starting fights like this because that means the bully is gonna have to be worried about someone defending themselves, but they will also get suspended for starting it. You know, that'd be a much better system. What kind of bogus is this? This mom is such a champ, but this reminds me so much of the stuff you learn when you do martial arts. For example, when I was doing martial arts for quite a few years, one of the key points is that it's self-defense. You don't learn it with the purpose of just attacking people. So the whole rhetoric of like violence is never the answer works for as long as the other person isn't violent first. You know, that's that, that kind of goes into it. Guess she won't be asking that again. I, trans, M16, am in a few of the same classes as my long-term bully. We will call her Stella. And one of Stella's F15 favorite things to do is ask me, But what is in your pants, though? She does this quite often, and I've tried everything to make her stop, as it does make me feel dysphoric. So one day, I don't know what clicked, ironic once you get it, but I had had enough. So when she inevitably asks what's in my pants, I said what only a true fan of the click would say <laughs> and in a relatively loud voice i clearly said lady i do not want to have sex with you stop asking what's in my pants <laughs> she looked around panicked and asked the teacher to be excused and needless to say she never asked again shout out to the click for this wonderful comeback oh my god that's so beautiful i love hearing when bullies get traumatized by snazzy comeback from videos that is so beautiful hell yes <laughs> And honestly, it's not even my original idea. It's a bit of a spin-off of, I think it was Stephen Fry who said it. When he had bullies come against him back in school, he would always go the kind of kinky masochist route and just be like, Oh no, please, you're turning me on. And then everyone would back off and be like, Oh no, oh, I'm gonna catch the gay or, or something like that, you know? So it's kind of a spin-off off of that, but I think the methodology of making bullies uncomfortable for bullying you in ways they don't expect or ways they might be insecure about themselves. Oh my god, it's such a power move. Congratulations, you traumatized them back. You've got a minch, haven't ya? I, M23, have long hair and was in the men's toilet on a night out. I come out of the stall and walked past two men in the urinals. They were proper lad blokes. I'm in south of England, so you can imagine what they sounded and looked like. One of them looks at me walking to the sink and goes, All right, love, you shouldn't be in here. You got a man, shouldn't you? Oi, bruv. <laughs> anyway. I looked up at him from my hands and he looked shocked, noticing my facial hair. Oh, sorry, mate. I thought you was a girl. I finished washing my hands and turned to him and said in my deepest voice, I do have a vagina, actually. 
and walked out. The look on his face was iconic. His mouth was wide open, but he was speechless and shocked. I wish I had a camera. I am a transgender man, for context. I've always found it so interesting, because where I'm from at least, I think the only places where I really notice there being gendered bathrooms is specifically bathrooms you would go into for like changing diapers on babies, but it's more like a baby bathroom slash like handicap toilet, so it's not really gendered either, I suppose. Or it's international food chains. Like McDonald's, for example, that you find in Sweden has gendered bathrooms, but I don't remember having gendered bathrooms, for example, back at my uni, or in the office I used to go to, or anything like that. Uh, maybe, maybe in some public spaces there are, actually. Maybe in some public spaces. I just haven't thought that much about it. It seems like such a weirdly odd debate. Most of the time I'm in the stall anyway. Who gives a shit? I also remember the whole argument where it's like, but, but if you don't have gender toilets, anyone can make it in there and be like, oh, darn it, I was gonna creep on some women, but there is a sign here with a skirt on it, I can't go past this magic barrier. Like, people that would, you know, assault people in a bathroom, you know, but they're, but they're stopped by <laughs> a little sign. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about that. Made my mom cry because she believed my crazy grandma. Content warning, religion, cult mentions. So, in short, for some context, I was raised in a cult of the godly flavor, and my mom was a bit more lax at some things, but not by a lot. For some context, things like Sailor Moon and Pokemon weren't allowed because they didn't say their abilities came from God. <laughs> oh yeah, that scene in Pokemon where you have like a disclaimer on the screen every time Pikachu does a thunderstrike. <laughs> Pikachu, use thunderclap! Disclaimer, this power was granted to Pikachu by God! Um, anyway, thunderclap st strike. Cheeks. And there is only one other that could grant such things, and that is Satan! Ooh, I guess like all the gods in the Pokemon universe are, are Satans now. Is that where we're going with this? But Disney was fine. <laughs> I guess it's American enough. Now, on the main event. I was about six or seven years old and obsessed with unicorns. Posters, books, clothes, glow-in-the-dark stars, and a fantasy type set that showed unicorns. Magical castles, and so on. Figurines, you name it. I was about that life. Well, one day, my legit insane grandmother, my mother's mom, who was generally under the idea I was evil and demonic and wasn't ashamed to announce it. Wow, that sounds like good family vibes, kind of just presuming that you're bad. I've noticed that with people that assume these kind of things, once they get the idea that you're bad, and this can happen in many contexts in life, they will kind of project anything onto that. It's a logical fallacy, really, because they try to verify a bias they already have instead of looking for legitimate evidence. Although I think looking at legitimate evidence for like your, your grandkid being evil is a little bit odd to begin with. Convinced my mom that all the unicorn stuff fell under the same satanic umbrella as Sailor Moon and Pokemon. Ah, yes, Sailor Moon. That traditional satanic propaganda. That I didn't need the influence and talked her into getting rid of all of it. This conversation took place before I even woke up that day. And I woke up to my mom telling me to get dressed because grandma was coming over to help with some much needed cleaning. Yes, indeed, we're just cleaning out that satanic Sailor Moon sh**, kiddo. And explained what was happening. I, of course, broke down and begged her not to. But she basically waved me off, told me to save it and get dressed. I did and tried to hide a few things and only one small plastic toy wasn't found. But I got dressed and by then my grandma had shown up. Everything was cut up, smashed, burned, and then made me do all of it as they searched my room with military precision. I had to destroy my clothes, burn books and posters, and smash any figurines, but all ended up in a literal dumpster fire. Of course, this hit me like a truck. Of course it does, Jesus, you have your family treating you like a criminal for liking Pokemon. The wildest thing is that people like this always believe they're doing like the just thing. They believe they're fighting evil, but in reality they're just traumatizing a poor kid and like making sure they can't trust boundaries ever again. <sighs> Come on, man. Of course, this hit me like a truck and I was sobbing through the whole thing. And they <coughs> me, saying I was upset because I was still in Satan's grasp. Oh yeah, this kid can't be sad because we're literally burning all their toys and stuff in front of them and lecturing them how they're satanic. 
They must be crying because Satan still has a hold on them. You know that satanic Pikachu? Yeah, that's the one. That's why they're crying. That's convenient, isn't it? There was even a fight over the glow-in-the-dark stars when the glow-in-the-dark magical fantasy ones were being assessed as evil or not. <laughs> when your belief has gone to the point where you're assessing little glow-in-the-dark sticker stars that your kid likes having in the roof of the room, if they're inherently evil or not, you have completely lost sight of anything that would be remotely relevant. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's kind of like... <laughs> ironic. <laughs> the fantasy ones lost, and my dad came home while we fought about the stars, because I refused to budge. And dad took one look at everything, said the stars stay, and ordered this whole ordeal over. Sadly, he was too late to save anything except the stars, but he was livid. At least you have one parent on your side, but oh my god, this entire operation by the grandma and mom to just torch everything while the dad is out and against the kid's wishes and calling them satanic and be like, Satan is controlling you. I don't know of any kid that has liked Pokemon must be Satan. Extra context, my dad was not about the cult life or ideas, but let some slide for a few reasons, but mostly because they would pull this type of poo while he was at work. And the man of the house, cult rules said his word was his law, and he weaponized the frick out of that when they would do this. Otherwise, he was very laid back and loving father, and rarely got mad, so when he did, it was a big deal. That's kind of like a funny, ironic twist as well. He's not into the culty stuff. But they are. But also, according to the cult, he should be in charge. So then he just uses that against them when they go bananas. What an incredibly messy situation. Oh my god, life has enough problems as it is. You don't need to overanalyze Pokemon being satanic. Oh my... Nyah. And even if Pokemon was satanic, it would just make me love it even more. A week of switching between crying and dissociation on my end, and my dad's anger at my mom and grandma, my mom finally realized she'd done goofed on this one. No shite. And got me a few small unicorn things. We weren't rich, but she wanted to try to make it right somehow. To give me when she apologized profusely for what she had done and allowed. All I did was look, but not touch the items. Then looked at her, shrugged apathetically as I was still messed up over it, and said, I don't want these anymore. My mom started to cry, apologized again, which earned her another apathetic shrug, and I looked at her with a thousand yard stare and said, it doesn't matter anymore because it's too late, and walked away to my room. My mom cried for a month and would later try to get me back into unicorns, but it never worked. She still gets upset to this day 30 years later when it's brought up. Maybe don't listen to your mom that you know is insane and we wouldn't be here. Mother. That is so far over any sort of line. Oh my god, I think what bothers me the most about these sort of stories is that the people doing it are so convinced they are in the right. It's not just some asshole that are completely owning the fact they're an asshole and are just assholing their way through the world. And it's like, oh, they're an asshole, but at least they're wearing it on the sleeves, so I can just kind of avoid them. These are people that are so righteous and so thoroughly believe what they're doing is right that like, oh, let's burn our kids' property and make them feel ashamed for liking basic kid things. We're doing this for good reason. <laughs> Fam, fam, you think you would love to be catcalled? <laughs> okay, sure. About 10 years ago, my friend and I, both 22F at the time, joined a group of friends at a bar after we both got off work. The group had already been drinking and we were all standing outside for a smoke. One of our friends, T, 22M, made an offhand comment about how women shouldn't be so upset when guys try to hit on them and that he would love for a woman to be that aggressive towards him. A few people laughed, some tried to reason, I was immediately furious. I called him out on it and bet him by the end of the night he would be begging me to quit. He quickly took me up on the offer, laughing that there was no way he would ever tell a woman to stop. So we shook hands and I started in on him. What I didn't expect was my female friend to join in on the subtle comments. We called him sweetheart, told him how his bicep looked good but better with no shirt on, etc. for the majority of the night. He initially found it hilarious and played along, but it started to wear on him. The other two guys tried to get him to call it quits and started hassling us for being creeps, <laughs> but T kept saying it wasn't that bad, although the joke was getting old. By the end of the night, another female friend showed up to collect her drunk boyfriend and we filled her in on what was happening. So while we were across the street from the guys, suddenly it became a barrage of catcalling from the three of us. We rejoined the group of guys a few minutes later, when T called it quits because he started to feel like every woman he walked past was going to join in on what we were doing.
doing. The look of shock on those guys' faces when the three of us explained that that feeling is exactly how women feel will never leave me. Plus, my friend dug at the other guys for not showing that same energy when one of us was being hassled. Oh yeah, yeah, because they didn't, probably didn't see it uh, that way until now. Well, that was an eye-opening experience for them. Oh my god. Now you have to block them from going anywhere until they give you their number. And then call it while he's standing there to make sure it's good. Well, I tell you, I am so mad I hadn't thought about that. Oh boy, that is absolutely brilliant. And when they refuse to give you their number, call them a freaking birch and say you were just trying to be nice. Oh my god, you girls are all the same. I'm a nice guy. Ah! <laughs> so incredibly beautiful. You should also bring fedoras to, to make the whole experience complete. I've met people, especially in party scenarios, that are like really weirdly pushy. Both men and women, but it's more common in men. We had a party a bunch of years ago, like a big house party with a bunch of people, like friends, friends of friends, friends from uni and school, etc. It was a lot of fun. And after a while in the evening, we had some girls come to us and be like, yeah, no, it's a bit weird, like, uh, it's, it's touchy and stuff. And we were like, what? Like, the, we know most of people here, like, what, what, are, what are you talking about? Like, this is super weird, this has never happened before. And we did some, like, investigating, or whatever you want to call it. And it turns out, it was the same freaking dude. Like, a friend of a friend, some drunk butthole who was just going around being harassing with everyone. So after a while, it was like, five or ten girls that were uncomfortable. All because of this one butthole! <laughs> I mean, he, he was thrown out on the street after that, of course, but... Jesus Christ, man. It's not really a wholesome twist, sadly, but something you realize in life after a while is that one poopy person can ruin it for so many. Because if they're being poopy towards one person, it probably means that they have crossed this line with other people as well. This can happen in workplaces, at parties, in projects, wherever. Like, one bad apple that acts the same way towards multiple people can just sour the experience for so many. It kinda sucks. My boss asked me for naughty recommendation at work while we were talking, and I gave him two girls one cup. <laughs> Ho, oh, oh. uh, ho! I used to work at a body shop, and while I don't expect them to be very professional, since it was a random ghetto place in a third world country, I also don't expect my boss coming up to me talking about weird poo I don't want to hear. So this one time he went to me and asked for naughty recommendations. I immediately went, ah, this guy is not gonna do this poo ever again when he sees two girls one cup, and I actually made him watch it. The look on this pile of Pooh's face was comedy gold, and I was laughing my butt off. Guess what? I was right, and he never asked me for weird poo like that ever again. Oh, that is so beautiful. It sort of reminds me of the bully story, where you just one-up the bully to the point they get too uncomfortable. You know, if you convince this person that you're into the wildest stuff that, like, makes him gag... <laughs> He's never gonna bring that conversation up again. <laughs> you cannot handle my power, creepy Mr. Boss. My husband is digging his grave right now. Content warning, pet death. Yesterday afternoon, my elderly lab passed away in his sleep. It wasn't entirely a surprise, but we thought we would have a few more days. He was in his comfy bed and, in common, had released his bowels upon passing. Being a holiday, one of our only options was to bury him in our yard. We wrapped him in a blanket and my husband started digging. I went to put his soiled bed in the trash, which is behind the bush on the north side of the house. My neighbor on that side doesn't live in the house. He just bought it as an investment property and has been slowly renovating it and tends to be around on weekends and holidays. He's an unpleasant old goat, and I'll just leave it at that. He saw me putting it in the trash and said, Don't you teach those dogs? We had three not to poo in the house. I said, well, my husband is digging his grave now, so we'll just have to let it slide. He did immediately apologize, but gah, not what I needed to hear at the time. You talk a lot for how much you say, delivered with either a sugary smile or slight concern will shut old gents up for months. Get it just right, and you might never hear them speak again. I am so sorry. I am banking this for the next time he has unsolicited advice or requesting men to be judgmental, because that's about 90% of our interactions. Yeah, seems to be a generational affliction. There is an old cowboy rule. It's true, it's kind, it's necessary. If you can't check at least two boxes, it's usually not worth saying. Don't know that wisdom skipped this generation that needed it most. But the flip side is, if something said to you can't check two boxes, you're allowed a nay, morally obligated, to bless their heart. Oh, I sometimes get this. I sometimes get this with the work I do with YouTube. Like, the amount of, I don't know, unsolicited advice you get sometimes is absolutely hilarious. 
hilarious. And the advice usually goes something like, Ooh, I watched one of your videos for three minutes. Have you thought about collaborating with other creators? And I'm like, wow, what a mind-blowing concept. If you had scrolled more than 30 seconds, you would have seen I'm already doing it! No, I mean, it's... I mean, in one way, it can be seen as a compliment because they're actually interested enough in what you do to engage with it. But it's also kind of funny to me when people assume they know enough to give you advice you don't already know after, like, three minutes of research. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just the darndest thing, isn't it? My 50-year-old male co-worker invited me, 31F, to attend a salsa party with him. I told him that I generally don't go places with a lot of men under the influence of alcohol without my fiancé, because I don't want to be drugged or SA'd. He then asked me how I could be so arrogant to assume random men would be so interested in me that they would go to these lanes to get with me. <laughs> That's his comeback, it's like, oh, you're worried about this happening? Well, you're also ugly. <laughs> what a gent. When I responded, I've had that happen to me more than once and I don't want to go through that again. He started asking me invasive questions about the incidents to determine if he would consider the things that happened to me assault. I hit back with the most graphic trauma dump of what happened to me and made him so uncomfortable that he had to step out for a bit. He did end up apologizing for this behavior and we just generally ignore each other. Traumatize them back! Yippee! What boggles my mind the most about this story is how many chances he had to just back down, you know? Oh, your experience isn't valid because I personally don't think you're hot enough that I could see bad things happening to you. Oh my god, imagine if someone came to this person and be like, Hey, I had someone stalk me for, for a long amount of time. That messed me up. And his response is like, You think you're interesting enough to stalk? <laughs> oh my god. Usually the brain is supposed to consist of more than just a cup of lard, but I but I suppose in, in his case that's not very applicable now, is it? One of the instances where I think a trauma dump is a perfectly viable course of action. Heck yeah, traumatize them back. Give me an unnecessary pat down at the airport because I'm trans? Expect me to make it even more awkward. I am a trans woman, 27 years old, and was on a flight today from a small airport in the Midwest. I, sort of, but not that well, pass. And so the scanner machine at the airport read me as female with an anomaly detected on my crotch. I was wearing a light-colored sundress. The agent reached up my dress and patted me down on my private parts in front of everyone? Bruh. I've been patted down many times in airports and been stuck in random checks and that kind of stuff. No one has ever patted me in private areas. What the hell is this? I mean, at most they would run like a metal detector, like in front of your crotch maybe. That's, that's like the most. Like, come on, dude. This sort of thing happens to a lot of transgender people at airports. Numerous articles have been written by trans women who have had this exact experience. So if you Google trans women TSA airport pat down, you will find a plethora of similar horror stories. I fly a lot all over the country for work several times a year, so it's happened to me frequently enough that I expect it to happen sometimes. That is so sad. Dear God. If there is one thing my messed up upbringing taught me, it's that sometimes you have to embrace the humiliation. So I told the agent, I bet you're glad I wore shorts under my dress today. She turned bright red, immediately seized the pat down, and at that exact moment she just so happened to determine that I was safe and waved me through to the terminal. I had no issue after. Thank you so much all for the mostly kind and supportive comments, as well as sharing your stories of racial disability and gender-related mistreatment by the TSA. It is so awful and needs to be fixed. The TSA does provide a necessary service, but less mandatory crotch touching would be a much-needed improvement. Given that I'm flying again next month, I will take up the advice of many commenters and get the TSA pre-check. Hopefully it helps with the aforementioned issues. Yeah, that's something I see when I scroll these comments. That, that sounds like a good thing. I'm not particularly familiar with myself, but it sounds like people with similar experience have had some luck using that method. Up? The dress? Underclothes? That is not okay, and I'm so sorry that happened to you. I had shorts underneath, but yes, it's what happened. Very uncomfortable indeed. That is so wild. I can't believe they would just go for it so, like, blatantly. I have been disappointed today. 
I'm really glad you got to make them uncomfortable in return, though. You know, if I'm gonna be uncomfortable, you better be sure I'm taking you with me. You wanna know about my naughty life? <laughs> Alrighty then. I have told this story once before on another subreddit, but this one fits so well, I just can't resist. My stepmother is really nosy, to the point where, after I got a boyfriend, straight relationship, she constantly asked me if I had done the deed yet. The thing is, I am asexual, so I'm not really interested in the naughties, but my boyfriend is. So, we got a strap on. The next time my stepmother asked if I had had the naughties yet, I asked if she knew what a strap on was. She did not. Now she does. She had stood in shock as I told her every little detail about how much prep goes into the uh, naughty stuff from the opposite direction with a strap on and how much my boyfriend loves it. She noped out of that conversation real quick. Absolute coward. You can't keep asking people questions like this and then be like, Oh my god, shock! Oh my god, oh, a strap on! Oh my god! If you can't take a punch, don't get into the rink! It's like the person that asked for naughty recommendations at the office and they get sent two girls one cup. Like, you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a little wimp! You're a little wimpy person, aren't you? And quick note, I made sure that my boyfriend was okay with sharing before saying anything. He was happy to traumatize some people and has even picked up on the strategy himself to mess with nosy co-workers. That's like the weirdest takeaway about stories like this. People that are so invasive and ask the most inappropriate questions are also surprisingly quick to be really uncomfortable the moment the answer doesn't perfectly align with whatever they expected. That is hilarious. Old lady tried to make a rude comment about my tattoo. I made her regret it. So this happened about five years ago. I remember the day because it had been a really bad one. I had also just gotten a new tattoo and was really happy with it. It is fairly simple in design, but the detail is gorgeous. This tattoo depicts a giraffe and a sunflower. Wrapped around the giraffe's legs is a banner that reads, I love you, Kenzie. I was a cashier at the time, working at the local Target. I decided to wear a t-shirt so the fabric wouldn't rub the tattoo and anyone could see it. Throughout the day, customers were rude and machines were having problems and I was just so incredibly over it. I was about to start shutting down so I could go home when a lady came into my lane with a very full cart. I sighed, put on my smile and got to work. She scowled and said with no prompting, eh, You really shouldn't get friends' names tattooed on your arm. While this is very sound advice in my opinion, Kenzie was not a friend of mine, so with a very dead stare, I replied, That is my twin sister. She died two months ago, but thank you for the advice. I will keep it in mind. She went white as a sheet and began stammering out an apology. She couldn't change lanes as I had already started checking her groceries. So she was stuck there and I took my sweet time checking. I think I took a full 10 minutes to get through her cart and the whole time she couldn't even look at me. It was incredible. Best customer I have ever dealt with. I also love knowing that Kenzie would have loved to see it. Like, yeah, I suppose, like, the advice is like, okay, if, if you have, like, some relation that could be temporary or whatever, getting a name sounds like something that could lead to some sort of regret, I suppose. But this is so unprompted, dude. You don't know what a tattoo is. Oh my god, it could be their own name. It could be the name of, like, a relative that passed away. It could be the name of literally anything. Like, why... <laughs> Why assume this when it could be something completely else or a memorial thing? That is so stupid. Oh my god. I suppose standing in this awkward grocery line for 15 minutes straight after saying it and not being able to get away probably traumatized her enough to not do it again. Hell yeah. Condolences first, kudos second. The beauty is that she got to sit it and fester the whole time. The cringe. Oh, the cringe. The uncomfortable silence made the mildly longer shift so, so worth it. Certain things in life money just can't pay for, can they? Oh, the second-hand cringe and the glory. Sometimes the best things in life come for free. A boob grab on the run. So at the possible peril of my inbox, I don't read DMs anyway, let's start this story by establishing that I am a busty woman. Things that look normal on other girls can look naughty on me. As I've gotten older, I just cover up more because I'm sick of people's reactions. But when I was younger, I was bolder. So one weekend night, I was walking down U Street in DC with my friends. Some dude just passed me and grabbed my bob casually and painfully. I yelled out, did that guy just grab my bob? So my friend M dashed after him and punched him in the face. <laughs> the guy ran off and I assumed that was that. 
About an hour later, my other friend and I were sitting outside M Pizza, across the street from the initial incident, waiting for M to get us some food. Truly solid man. And we heard a drunken dude leering at my friend this time. Who could it be? You know it! Is that the same dude who grabbed me earlier? I asked. His eyes got wide as hell, and he literally sprinted away. Did I take my once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to yell, Yeah, you better run, Birch! Yes. Yes, I did. What a night in our nation's capital. I think stories like this present a few different good takeaways, right? Good friends are incredibly valuable. Heck yeah, shout out. Second thing, some people are so incredibly shameless and will do the same thing over and over again because their morals doesn't actually stretch long enough to cover these sort of incidents, so they will just keep crossing that line over and over and over again. You know, if someone does it once, what's stopping them from doing it again, really? And number three, they're all absolute cowards. Once there's the least bit of consequence for what they're doing, it's like, oh my god, oh, run away, I'm oh, such a brave man. That is absolutely beautiful takeaway. Bullies and people like this are usually incredibly cowardice. Telling people I am illegal in several states. I'm not sure if this counts, but I'm trans. I currently live and work in a very liberal state in the US, so I'm fine for now. I used to live in a very conservative state though. A lot of my coworkers are in other parts of the LGBT plus community or a part of other marginalized communities. Apparently I pass pretty well as cis. Apparently I pass pretty well as cis. So they will start talking to or around me about certain issues and act like I don't know what it's like when I empathize. So I drop the, I am illegal in Florida, Texas, insert other state into the conversation and gets met with bewildered looks that quickly turn into horrified when I explain I'm trans. I guess the moral of the story here is don't play the oppression olympics with someone you don't know that well edit wanted to add that many of you are missing the point that they talk down to me as if i can't understand or empathize about what they're going through based entirely on my appearance alone and also to respond to the people saying my response is rude i wanted to say yes and I'm in my late 30s and have been a part of a few oppressed communities my entire life. I am tired of being polite to people who 9 out of 10 times will never afford me the same courtesy. I think awareness regarding multiple things is important, especially to listen regarding topics that you yourself might not experience. But sometimes, of course, very much like this person says, people that participate in that sometimes assume too much about other people. I've had people say that to me too, for example, when I talk about certain topics that I have experience with, and they're like, oh, look at him. He doesn't know what it's like. He's just virtue signaling or something. And I'm like, fam, you don't, you don't know me. Not this in particular, though, of course, but like regarding other topics. So sometimes people are quite presumptuous based on looks alone. And I suppose that's something important to, to take away. You can share your own experience without potentially just ignoring someone else's or assuming they don't have experiences of their own, I guess. Seriously, I was looking for a newspaper to save after the 2008 election. A complete stranger was also getting a paper and said out loud to me in public, Frankly, I don't think America is ready for N-word in the White House. I was stunned. I said in classic the jerk tone, Ma'am, I voted for that N-word, and I'll probably do it next time too. Kindly suck a PP, seriously, I am a freaking stranger. Oh my god, can you imagine us leaning in and saying that so like confidently and shamelessly as just a random like newsstand? Bruh. Am I the butthole? A woman demanded info on my condition, so I asked her extremely personal questions. I, 49F, was at a state fair yesterday, and this woman near me came over and demanded info about my medical condition. Long story short, I am paralyzed from roughly the bra band down. I use a power wheelchair and have a service dog. I usually don't mind educating people about paralysis, access issues, and chatting about my dog. But this woman, my dudes, she was rude, abrasive, and demanding. She acted like she was in Title to my personal medical history. She didn't even ask politely, just demanded to know how it happened, what the results were, if I tried XYZ treatments, you name it. She even wanted to know about my naughty life. Oh, is this the kind of person that like assumes really weird treatment? Have you tried carrot juice mixed with elderflower and rubbing onions in your socks? Hmm. <laughs> Just seriously? Who asks this stuff of a literal stranger unfortunate enough to be eating delicious fair food at the table area? I just stared at her in shock as my delicious deep-fried barbecue got cold. 
So I smiled, as politely as I could manage, and this is where I may have been the butthole. I started to ask her about her last gynecology visit. Where the stirrups too high? Did she have to do that awkward shimmy scoot down table? If the speculum was cold, if the pap smear hurt, the usual. If she felt entitled to my answers, I should be entitled to her answers, right? Oh, I don't think that makes it a butthole at all. That's just turning the same thing around and maybe making the person, most likely not, but maybe making them realize that what they're saying is very inappropriate. Because some people really struggle to recognize when they go too far unless it happens to them. You saw this with the story about the cat calling. You see this, for example, with the stories regarding trans people. Like, asking someone, what's in your pants? It's like a really creepy thing to do. If someone comes up to a random person at the street and asks what's in their pants, that's usually seen as harassment. But some people just lose their mind because they completely forget it's considered sexual harassment if it happens to a trans person. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just one line of logic too far away for some reason. It just makes them lose the common sense that would normally apply. Well, she threw an absolute fit. <laughs> okay, so she she did learn from it. <laughs> Started screaming and yelling that I was gross and a pervert, and so on and so on. Her group tried to calm her down, and one of them told me I should have just been polite and answered her questions. <laughs> that is so ironic. She answers to you like, oh, what's your naughty life like? And you're like, hmm, what's yours like? And then she starts screaming, be like, you should just politely answer her invasive questions, even though she reacted this way to the invasive questions the other way around. The irony is staggering, man. As far as I could tell, this woman wasn't impaired in any way. She didn't have a carer or minder. She was with a group of friends that had been carrying on normally with them until she saw me. I got to the table, asked if the space was free, and set up the end of the table because my chair fits neatly at the end of One Piece picnic benches. I told the group that if she wanted my personal and private medical information, then she should trade info for info. Two of the people called me a butthole when they <laughs> left. <laughs> You know they're bad friends when they insist on backing up their other friend even when they are being the butthole and asking strangers personal medical information. What makes a friend a good friend is that they will let you know when you overstep something or they check you when they might need to, you know? These are awful friends because next time maybe it's not gonna be just a pleasant person. Next time maybe it's just gonna be someone who punches them in the face because they ask invasive questions, you know? Not saying that would be the right way to go about it, but my point is that if you're overstepping so far and your friends don't check you and you risk getting into more trouble because you keep just expressing this really nasty behavior, then they're not good friends either. <laughs> this group of people just suck. <laughs> Two of the people called me a butthole when they left, trying to calm down their nearly hysterical hysterical, in quotation marks, friend as they left. She was still screaming and shouting how I was a perv, cruel, and mean. People were staring at me, and I hated it. At the time, I felt good for finally finding a shiny new but still broken spine and standing up for myself, so to speak. I was talking to friends last night, and they said I was a butthole. I could have politely told her I wasn't going to tell her. Screw that! No, 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 screw that. If someone comes up to me on the, in the street and tell me, like, how big is your peepee? -pee? Or what's your medical history? When was the last time you had a prostate exam? I, I, w I would just start giving them the same thing back. Or, or you know, I, I wouldn't be nice to them. <laughs> they weren't nice to me, you know? <laughs> Why would you do that? I'm not gonna waste my niceness on someone who doesn't deserve it. That reply, like telling this person is the butthole, is the exact same sort of logic as that school scenario, the zero tolerance policy, where the person defending themselves from bullies also gets expelled because technically it's zero tolerance policy. Screw that stuff! Screw this! It's self-defense! Verbal self-defense, but still self-defense! Hell yeah, kudos. I would have done the same. I tried that when she came over and demanded answers, not even asked for them. So Reddit, I am asking here, am I the butthole for not divulging my medical info and asking her about hers? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think, I think it's a beautiful kind of comeback, you know? I mean, technically, it's still, like, rude. You know, I guess, but it's also a very snazzy response in kind. And if they can't handle people asking the questions to them, they sure as shite shouldn't ask other strangers about it. Are you kidding me? It's just, it's just a universe card. That's it. <laughs> That's all there is to it. My mom makes homophobic comments to me. So I am queer, and my mom has always been the type of ally that's supportive in public but will make backhanded comments just because she's actually homophobic. Not just in the way of calling me slurs. What, 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 what kind of stuff are we, are, are we referring to here? Oh, come on, Timmy, you little F slur. <laughs> Let's go on a picnic. What? Not just in the way of calling me slurs, but calling me a carpet muncher. Jesus Christ, wholesome interactions with your family. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh. This is like that stepmother that didn't know what a strap on is, isn't it? It's that kind of conversation that like, no, 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 why, why? And how can I like silicon peepees, but not real ones, etc., etc.? How can gayness be real, blah, blah, and so on and so forth? I have a brain, I promise. Anyway, I got in a serious relationship about four years ago, and around the same time she started dating her current husband. She would always do this thing to try and impress people, I guess, where she makes fun of me and harass me, always making me the butt of the joke. And if I got upset, she would roll her eyes and said how sensitive I am and how I am much meaner to her. That's just like classic kind of passive bully behavior. That's not good from your family? Come on. My partner and I I decided to make Thanksgiving that year, and it was my first time cooking such a large meal. My mom was immediately, the whole week leading up to it, telling everyone how awful it was going to be, and how she was going to be in the ER all night. Oh, it's like, oh, we're all gonna get food poisoning. Then don't show up. I've never understood this rudeness. If someone treats you to a meal or like a festivity at their place, and they take care of everything, be grateful or don't come. There are two options. Mind you, she's never cooked for us in her life. <laughs> Ironic. She brings her boyfriend and is making fun of me and my cooking all night, as if she knows how to make a turkey. I go to carve my turkey, and she insists the man does it. So we wait for 30 minutes for her boyfriend to come out of the bathroom, just for him to not even know how to carve a turkey. He had to watch a YouTube video. Food is delicious, and while I'm amazed I made the best Thanksgiving meal I ever had, my mom starts talking about me. I wasn't paying attention because I'm used to it by now, and my partner was raving about how good it was. Suddenly, my mom asks me, Hey, tell us one of your jokes, but please don't make this one gay. Nobody wants to be grossed out. Oh. She is laughing, and sure, she got me so good, like her boyfriend would be so impressed by her. I look her dead in the eyes and say, Oh, you mean like your divorces, or how you have five kids from five different dads? They left about ten minutes later. You know, this falls into that category again. Like, sure, in principle, in a vacuum, it's a butthole thing to bring up. But they were also really pushing for it. Like, if you're gonna do this kind of bullying crap against someone, you've kind of opened yourself up to receive the same back. You know, you've already opened up that this is like the standard of insults that you're willing to toss across the table. Then you should feel what it's like to be on the receiving end as well, honestly. <laughs> so, I don't think this person is the butthole at all. <laughs> It sounds like this person was kind of like poking at this for a very long time, and they finally got to hear what's what. Mock my drink? Enjoy your embarrassment. This is not mine. It was posted by you slash Hovis Mavis and was gloriously perfect for the subreddit. I was on holiday with my son, 14, and we were watching the football in a bar in the evening. I don't really drink, but I do enjoy a cocktail while on holiday. The server came by and asked if we wanted drinks. I asked for a pina colada, and she snickered a little at the order and kind of laughed, but <laughs> okay, and then walked off to make it. What? Pina coladas are delicious. What? Are you really gonna shame someone for like the cocktail they order? Dear God. This annoyed me a little. I'm just a grown man wanting to drink a tasty cocktail. What's wrong with that? When she brought the drink back, I got my petty revenge. As she was placing the drink on the table, I said, Ah, oh, my mom loved these. God rest her. I always have one on the anniversary of her death to remember her. She looked horrified and tried to shuffle off quickly, so I asked her for a cocktail stir, so she had to come back again. <laughs> when she came back, I took a sip from the straw, kissed my hand and pointed to the sky, trying to look sad. <sighs> this cocktail is for you, Ma! She was so visibly uncomfortable, I had to stifle my own laughs. She noticeably avoided our table multiple times after this. Who does that? Which adult person? Like, shame someone for the cocktail they ordered. That's so sad. This is some kind of like high school mindset when, you know, a bully desperately tries to find anything to nitpick to push people down for. Who? You ordered this drink instead of this drink? <laughs> that is beautiful. Maybe they won't do it again. Oh, yes, indeed. If nothing else, just out of trauma, you know? Maybe that's, maybe that's the wholesome takeaway we should have here today. Even if bullies don't learn to be better people, Maybe they will just be traumatized enough that they realize the bullying can backfire. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's good enough.
My husband got tired of the homophobia. My husband and I, a gay couple, used to live downtown in our city. The apartment was a converted Victorian home, quite charming, and our door was at the very top of a flight of stairs from the street to a porch. Our city has a mild challenge with unhoused folks. A new unhoused guy started frequenting the area and would often be near our alley or stoop. For weeks, anytime he saw one or the pair of us, he would make awful comments. Gay slurs, think baguette but with an F. Ah. Nice. Lewd references, etc. At first, we ignored him, writing it off as mental health or substance abuse. But it wore thin as he seemed otherwise lucid, and we realized he was just a homophobic butthole. Now, my husband is pretty laid back, a big softy, a sweetheart. But one day, he had clearly had it with this guy. We got back from grabbing some groceries, the guy was laying across our steps, blocking our way up. Holding grocery bags, I asked him to move as it was our steps, to which he replied with his usual, You're a couple F slurs. My husband stepped over him and headed up the stairs, says, Yeah, F slurs with the home. He has never bothered us again. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of those like really cringy memes you see 14 year old boys post, post on Twitter when it's like a Joker face and they're like, When the nice guy gets angry, God shiver in his boots. You know those memes? It's like one of those but it actually kind of applies. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh! Oh! How does it feel to get a taste of your own medicine? I, 16, used to be a chubby kid. When I was in kindergarten, there was this kid who was really disruptive. We will call him Sam for anonymity reasons. Ha! <laughs> Sam. <laughs> yes, indeed. Anyway, he would run around the classroom, didn't listen to the teacher, and was just loud and annoying in general. No one liked him. He used to bully me a lot. I never said anything because I just wasn't that type of kid. One day, Sam called me fat. To my face. Something snapped in me that day. I looked him dead in the eyes and said, You're so skinny, you're practically a twig. I can snap you in half if I want to. <laughs> Oh my, kindergarten really is something else, like Lord of the Flies stuff. Oh my god! He never dared to call me fat after that again. I went home that day and told my dad and grandpa what happened. They were really proud of me. Still one of those best moments of my life to this day. P.S. If this ends up in one of Clicky's videos, I'm gonna lose my mind! Whoop! Woohoo! Oh my god, that is really traumatizing the bully back. I have... A, a sort of similar memory from from way back in the day. I must have been like 14, maybe something like that. And I had a couple of of bullies in like a parallel class. I don't even know why they were bullying me, but we had like split kind of classes and stuff with like gymnastics and and that kind of thing. So during a couple of times during the day in the week, I was kind of like heading on my own between one thing and one thing because my friends were were in the other half of the class. And whenever I did this, this like group of other kids would like bully me and throw comments and stuff. I don't even really know why. It was really weird. And I remember one day, I just had enough. I was never a particularly violent kid or anything like that. But one day I just had enough. <laughs> and I walked up to the leader of the group and I just grabbed him by a shirt like this and just kind of pushed him up. And the whole group just, ha, ah, ah, ha, just scattered. It was kind of beautiful. And then, and then the main leader of the group started crying when I was holding it, like really snot crying. It was kind of embarrassing. And then a teacher saw it and came up. <laughs> And at first it was like, whoa, why are you holding this kid? And I said, like, he's been bullying me for months. And then the teacher was like, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Timmy, you're a f asshole. <laughs> so I didn't even get in trouble for it because he was so established as an asshole at the school. <laughs> it was beautiful. Then they sort of tried to reinvigorate the bullying, but no one really took it seriously, me included, because it was like, fam, last time you tried this. I just grabbed you and you started snot crying and the teacher wouldn't even have your side because you're such an established butthole. That was kind of funny. That's like one of my core memories from my mid-teens. <laughs> and I wasn't even a very big guy back then either. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Threaten me with R-wording? No more college for you! Trigger warning? Question mark? When I was in high school, I posted a lot of political poo on one of my accounts, and someone told me they hoped I got R-worded. He was a tater tot type, although this happened a while ago, so it was in older forms. His whole account was devoted to anonymous misogyny and terrorizing women. Anyways, I found information about him and where he went to college. People like this are so stupid. And like, it's kind of a good thing, in a way. Like, they're stupid enough that they don't properly, like, hide stuff. I don't know. It's so, it's so silly, man. It's so silly. 
Not that it's a surprise, but he was a loser. I told him I had his information and gave him the chance to apologize. He refused and said it wasn't him. So I submitted information I had to the school anyways. Later, he complained that he got expelled and had to move back with his mom. <laughs> that is so pathetic. What is this? Oh my god, the consequence of my actions? Uh, I'm gonna make anonymous threat and, and R-word things towards stranger on the internet, but be too stupid to even hide my information. Oh my god, my actions had consequences. Who would have thunk it? You know, I'm not a big fan of like reaching out to workplaces or trying to get people fired over like disagreements online or whatever. I think it's very childish. But when it gets to the point where someone is actually like threatening people, personally harassing them, like, yeah, now it's getting to a point where it's so personal that you could argue this is just harassment and threatening behavior. Like, th this, this isn't okay. And if you have consequences for those kind of stuff, that is perfectly reasonable. Don't believe I'm disabled? <laughs> Watch me. This happened to me a few years ago, in 2022. I am physically disabled. I got a card for my car and a wheelchair at 18. At the time of this event, I was 23, but looked younger. One day, I was at my local Walmart trying to go about my life. I was parked in a handicapped spot and was walking towards my trunk to get my wheelchair out. I am only part-time user. This elderly woman, looked around 70, sees me in the parking spot where I'm sitting down in my chair. She comes up to me and starts ranting at me how I'm lazy, that I'm too young to need a chair and parking spot, that I'm stealing that spot from someone who really needs it. I kept trying to explain to her that I'm disabled and need both the spot and the chair, but she just kept yelling at me. At this point, she had called me lazy, fat, and a bunch of slurs I'm not comfortable repeating. She finally says, Prove to me that you're disabled. Prove you need a spot more than a real disabled person. So, I do. I start to manually dislocate my left shoulder, followed by some more of my fingers and wrist. I even went and started to do the same to my knee before she told me to stop. She asked if I was crazy, that it's disgusting for me to do so in front of her. I looked up and said, Believe I'm disabled now? She walked away. Before people ask, I have EDS, so I am so lax in my joints that I can purposefully dislocate most of them. It's not something I do on purpose often. <laughs> that is so funny. I have such a beautiful mental picture of this angry old cat being like, <laughs> and like oh, oh no, stop! Oh my god! <laughs> that just that just painted such a beautiful mental picture that will live rent free in my mind for a little while. Well, laddies, lasses, and lassos, so I do hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed having you here, you wonderful, beautiful beans, and I will see you again in the very near future. Take care. Mwah. Thank <laughs> you.